Time Walk With Me. Hey everybody, welcome back to Time Walk With Me. I am the Time Walker, and if you've never walked through time, I highly recommend it. This mono blue deck is commanded by Jerolf, the Fleshrite. He is a 2-3 human warlock with a very affordable mana cost of 2 generic and 1 blue. When you cast a spell during your turn other than the first spell that turn, you get a 2-2 blue and black zombie rogue creature token. And whenever a zombie enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one plus one counter on it for each other zombie that entered the battlefield under your control this turn. As the illustration suggests, this deck was built with storm tactics in mind, casting as many low cost spells as possible during a turn, and making many increasingly bigger zombie tokens. If this creature was also black, I would have had access to many more zombies, but since it's mono blue, I figured I'd rely solely on Jerolf to get me zombies. The optimal strategy as I see it is to build up a bunch of spells in your hand so you can cast them in one big burst to make many large tokens. The cards in this category are meant to be low cost and also replace themselves in my hand. Most of them only cost one mana, but some of them are a little pricier. Birthday Escape, Brainstorm, Cerulean Wisps, Consider, Gitaxian Probe, Obsessive Search, Opt, Ponder, Preordain, Serum Visions, Sleight of Hand, Slip Through Space, Take the Fall, and Thought Scour. These spells basically cost no mana to cast, though some of them require you to have the mana to cast them. Bonesaw, Cloud of Fairies, Fountain of Youth, Mishra's Bauble, Ornithopter, Peregrine Drake, Phyrexian Walker, Rewind, Spider Silk Net, Tormod's Crypt, Urza's Bauble, and Zurin Orb. And I have ordered a Mem Knight that I planned to put in this deck, but I haven't gotten it or put it in yet, so whatever. Returning a creature to your hand allows you to cast it again, which potentially triggers Jerolf. I made sure to include creatures that bounce other creatures so I can make them bounce each other over and over again, creating bigger zombies every time. Aether Adept, Alchemist's Retrieval, Crystal Shard, Dream Stalker, Fairy Imposter, Mana War, Portal of Sanctuary, Rescue, and Sedisi's Faithful. We got Heraldic Banner, High Tide, Lotus Petal, Silver Mirror, Sisse's Ring, Sky Diamond, Soul Ring, Solemn Simulacrum, and Unstable Obelisk. Clever Conjurer. This is here to untap lands. I could have put it in the ramp category, but it might also be used to untap other things. Colossus Hammer. This low-cost artifact can trigger Jerolf, and later in the game, it can make a creature very scary. Fairy Vandal. This deck does quite a bit of drawing, so this fairy rogue takes advantage of that. Goblin Firebomb. Like Colossus Hammer, this artifact has a very low mana cost, so it triggers Jerolf pretty cheaply, and later on, it can help me get rid of something. Knights of Dol Amroth. Like Fairy Vandal, this human knight gets bigger when I draw my second card during any turn. Merfolk Secret Keeper slash Venture Deeper. This is two cheap spells in one. There are many other adventure cards, but this is the only one that I know of that fits a blue color identity and also costs one for the adventure and one for the creature. Mull Drifter. If I really need a 2-2 flyer along with my two cards, I can pay the whole five and maybe also get a Jerolf trigger. Or I can just pay the evoke cost and get two cards for three mana, which is a pretty good rate without the Jerolf trigger. Onerophage. This is a great exploiter of draws, getting bigger with every card I draw and having flying. Outlaw Stitcher. This is a great way to put out a very big zombie token, especially if I plot it beforehand. Prism Ring. You'll be casting a lot of blue spells, so it doesn't hurt to gain a bit of life from them, especially since this artifact only costs one. Razzle Dazzler. This guy gets bigger with your second spell each turn and becomes unblockable. Secrets of the Key. This gives you a clue token and it can be cast twice. Slickshot Lockpicker. 
Plotting this creature helps you to cast the spell it gives flashback to when it enters the battlefield. Swiftfoot Boots. People will probably be gunning for Jeroff, so this will help protect him. Tablet of the Guilds. Like Prism Ring, this low-cost artifact gives you life for casting blue spells. It does matter what other color you choose since this deck is mono blue. Trail of Evidence. This enchantment gives you free clues when you cast instants and sorceries. Trinket Mage. If you're not playing on game nights, this will get you that soul ring you didn't draw in your opening hand. Universal Solvent. This is exactly the same as Goblin Firebomb because redundancy is good in Commander. Vizier of Tumbling Sands. This human cleric is here for the same reason as Clever Conjurer. Like I said, redundancy. And Xerix Strobe Knight. As long as you're getting zombie tokens, you might as well also make some knights. Island, of course. Blighted Cataract. Castle Vantress. Desert of the Mindful. Hidden Cataract. Lonely Sandbar. Lotus Field. This is another reason to have untappers in the deck. Mage Ring Network. Memorial to Genius. Phyrexia's Core. Remote Isle. Skyline Cascade. Soaring Sea Cliff. The Surgical Bay. And Thespian Stage. So there we have it. That is Geralt the Fleshrite. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time.